thank you, everybody, and good morning from California. Uh, I thought about when I got, first got introduced to uh, Epic. It was when we had the uh, the Rome uh, 2018 uh, ECOC show, and we had that was the formal partnership between Kobo uh, and the in the Epic. And I was thinking it was at that show where we actually had demonstrations in both the Kobo booth and the uh, Ethernet Alliance booth on the electrical connectivity for you know 100 gigabits per second electrical uh, PAM4, uh, which is um, which is very important kind of for forging this what's beyond. Um, the uh the 400 gig technology that we're deploying today so that was uh that was just kind of and actually when i think back to that that was credo technology that was built in 28 nanometer and uh what we're, what we're rolling out as part of the credo connectivity strategy uh this year and through next year is all based on 16 slash 12 nanometer technology at much lower power and, and better performance so we've been kind of i guess championing saying let's get to the 100 gig radix so 100 gig electrical 100 gig optical now for a little over two years from a credo footprint perspective so a little background on credo for those that don't know us we're a privately held company uh but we, we're, we're quite sizable now uh, about 250 people worldwide uh have offices uh california hong kong uh shanghai wuhan and taipei uh, so got a good global footprint and what we really are about is uh, credo connectivity. And so it's the solutions that go around the big ASICs, whether they're compute ASICs, switch ASICs. Uh, so if you look at this slide here, you know, we've got 25 gig, 50 gig, and 100 gig CERTES technology. So we take that core technology of you know, CERTES for the serializer, deserializer interface, and we put it into line card products. That's the first one on the top there for retimers, gearboxes, and got a big footprint on, uh, on MaxSec uh, security. Uh, then we build the DSPs uh, that go inside the optical modules. Um, and actually, we've got a wide range of that going from 5G solutions to 200 gig, 400 gig, and now 800 gig optical modules. And then uh, we're, we're very big on this uh, high wire active electrical cables to kind of complete the ecosystem for rack connectivity. And to do this solution, um, what, we, what we decided to do at 100 gigabits per second in particular, we actually have five um, CERTES architectures that we developed uh, for the optimized solution. So, you know, if you're on the bottom and you're building, you know, two and a half D or MCM based chiplet solutions, you, you want a, a USR, XSR, low power, low picojoules per bit interface there to come off the ASIC to the, the module. Again, whether that's a just a CERTES chiplet or it's an optical island. Um, and then if you look at the retimers, whether it's, you know, chip to module, chip to module plus MR or the big sledgehammer LR. So we, 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 we took the investment to go do that. Uh, and again, what we're, what we're keen on is working with the kind of industry organizations and industry partners to say, how do we test these new channels? Uh, so if it's in the kind of the existing ecosystem, can we get to the front panel with 800? Do we get to the Kobo module? And again, we, we vetted those, uh, but now it's time to kind of start doing the, the deeper integration work. So, so what we look for generally is, you know, as a company, we look at high volume markets, we look at high bandwidth requirements. Uh, I kind of coined the expression accelerating instantaneous. I think that's what we're all in the business of doing. Uh, everyone looks at the cloud and they don't like, you know, delays in their video. They don't like delays in their in their data. Uh, traders don't want delays when they're making trade decisions. So it's how do, how do we create this cloud experience and scale uh, with the bandwidth explosion that uh, that uh, we've all kind of seen over the last couple of years. So again, one of those key things is to, to align with good partners, and a lot of them are in this uh, in this conference today. And then really, you know, align with industry forums. You know, we're involved, I think, with all of them: EA, Kobo, IEEE, OIF, and now Epic. So uh, looking forward to seeing what we can go do to kind of get these 800 gig and 1.6 terabit solutions really into a, a footprint from a from a power footprint, a cost footprint, a fungibility kind of footprint that we talked about. Thank you very much for a great presentation. Thank you for, for adapting to this world in which you do everything live. What can you do for them? What can they do for you? Yeah, so from, from our perspective, we've, we've always made our labs available uh, to do really the channel analysis. You know, Nathan put a picture up earlier uh, from TE where they're looking at the 224. Uh, we've been kind of vetting uh, PAM4 at 100 gigabaud technology now for a couple of years. Uh, you know, we, we believe that that's a, a path forward. 
now we got to start looking at those channels to say at what power, at what reach, and what can we go get accomplished, whether it's fly over next to the chip, fly over to the package, uh, can we get some PCB board trace going there? So, you know, we kind of we kind of see ourselves as the electrical, you know, kind of workload and uh, want to, you know, kind of pair up with the optical community on, you know, how can we, uh, you, know, you know, cross those domains. Thank you very much, Jeff. For me, this has been a fantastic meeting because I really realized that there is so many connections to do. At the end of the day, I'm not here to learn. There's a lot of organizations that make fantastic educational meetings. I'm here to find ways of people working together, to find reasons to work together. And the first thing I really was taking notes from all of you, and I did realize that the main challenge is cost, power consumption, and also that there are many new technologies that are not really designed for manufacturing, especially when it comes to the packaging. Uh, we are not sure where we are going, and that was for me a clear thing. We are not sure where we are going. It looks like multiplexing is one thing that is going to be very, very much studied for because of the case of cost, but the, the point of actually having many fibers was raised. Isn't it the fiber to achieve the most expensive part? So there's a lot of things to do there, especially when it comes to the increased density. Uh, the decentralization of Kobo was showing. There was a lot of things to be discussed there, but they took some part of a slide from US Connect, which is my nice, I think, clear facts or really what has been achieved. And there is still one milestone, which is the Kobo standard to be communicated, to be adopted. And I think that was very clear from Juniper to be also multi-vendor suitable also with the ones that who don't like the onboard optics and they're going still for the pluggable. We have to have something that is suitable for all the vendors. I think there we are already looking at the coherent technology as uh, something that is there, that uh, Francisco is obviously the future, but they still need for standardization and integration, integration to reduce the cost. The biggest challenge on the integrated photonics was the modulation, that's clear for me, and I think there we do have a lot of platforms who are developing very fast into making this 100 gigabot dream channel. I think we had a great presentation from the polymer, from the new phosphor, from the silicon photonics, the silicon uh, nitride, uh, we have to evolve into that. Big cells have been showing us for many years already as the best way to reduce costs in the in the laser integration in any system, not only in Datacom, but uh, with the packaging of wafer level, we have a huge opportunity to have another paradigm shift, even if we can combine it with the so-called co-package dream. And I would like to finish that. I would have liked to have more discussion on the form factor. I still have no idea where this is going. Is this QSPD or OSFP? I have no idea. I really want to know this, but I guess Arista was not here and they have something a lot to say about that. So for the next meeting, I would like to call my Arista friends. I want you in the meeting. And with this, I would like to dedicate an applause, a virtual applause to all of you. It has been a really a dream to have this meeting with these companies. We learn a lot together. We have to work together. Until the next time, continue being epic. I love you, man. Thank you. Bye-bye.